Morning folks. So I've got a Tektronix 485 here. Now this belongs to the same gentleman who uh, the 465 belonged to that I came that close to writing off. Um, so he, he was happy that that was repaired. It was not that expensive. So he gave me this to look at. Now this is totally dead. Um, it has a red tag on it here that says do not plug in, but he said he had plugged it in and there's nothing. Now, if we look at the back here, let me bring the camera in a little bit. It is missing a cover that goes over the fuse holder. However, it appears that the fuse holder still makes continuity. So I don't think it has anything to do with that. But uh, we're gonna take a look at this and see what we can find. Now the power supply is not your conventional power supply. Test equipment usually has much more complex power supplies because of the, uh, the tighter tolerances needed for test equipment. But this one has the added stage of having an inverter before the conventional power supply. So we're gonna take a look at some schematics, take the cover off and see what we find. Okay, so the 485 is a uh, 350 megahertz scope that was made in 19, initially made in 1972. Uh, very similar disassembly. We had to take these uh, feet or leg assemblies off here and down here. And then there's a plastic ring that we have to get off. That comes off here. And that's so we can get over these BNCs. And believe it or not, this is the focus and the stigmatism controls. These two connectors here are called LEMO, L-E-M-O. And they are used for powering active probes. I'll show you one of those here in a bit. Meantime, we got to see about getting this off. Okay. There we go. Okay, so once that's off, it should slide out the front just like the 465 did. There we go. Okay, so we got this out of the case. Let's get set up here so we can take some basic voltage readings. Okay, so it looks like the inverter is good, and I'll show you why I think that. I'm going to turn this on, and you'll see there's a little, looks like a neon lamp that flashes rapidly when it's powered up. You can probably see that right down there. Just get some shade on it. So that's flashing. The other thing that's interesting is if you can see the fan... I'm going to have to move the camera so you can get C down in here. So I'm not sure if you can see that fan's just kind of jiggling a little bit. It's like the inverter's starting up, but there's something going on with the power supply. Maybe something loading it down. Um, but something you need to be aware of when you work on these, I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to get the meter here so you can see... Let's get that up a little higher. Okay. That even though this is off, and I've turned it off now, what, it's probably been 30 seconds. If we go across the filter capacitors here and here, You can see we got over 190 volts on there. And it takes quite a while for this to bleed down. So you need to be aware, if you're going to stick your hands in here, it can have up to 200 some volts. Because when we turn this on, we got 328 volts. Now I just turned it off, and you can see it doesn't discharge right away. It'll probably take a good five to ten minutes before these will discharge down to where it'd be safe to handle. So I'm going to leave this off and we're going to print up some schematics and take a look. Okay, so I've gone through this and I went through the um, inverter. I think the inverter is okay. I think something is loading it down. So what I decided I wanted to do was to go through and take a look at the 
low voltage power supply. Now the inverter feeds us right here. And that's the primary of the low voltage regulated and unregulated power supplies. Let me turn this off. And easiest thing to do was Tech puts all these test points on the boards. And I just went through. Let's see, I know you can see the meter. The test points are these little guys sticking up here, if you can see them. I'll post a picture to give you a better idea. But anyway, I went through and started looking at the test points. And that's 24 ohms. I'm not even sure that's not even one of my... Here's, here's a power supply. 60 ohms. Positive 9 volt. There's a negative 9 floating around here. Negative 9s, 175 ohms. Our negative 15 is 148 ohms. Our negative 5 is 224. But when we get to our positive 15, we have a dead short. You can see we have 0.8 ohms on our meter. So that's the problem. And in order to isolate that, Tektronix made it pretty simple. This is our 15 volt supply here. Now this feeds onto the board, feeding power supplies into these op amps here, 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 and also into a transistor down here. Where did I see that? Negative 15, positive 15 here. However, we don't see any problem here because we have a 15 ohm resistor. And uh, since we have a dead short of less than one ohm, we can, we can uh, discount that. Same goes for things like this. If, even if this cap shorted, we get 10 ohms. Um, if this cap shorted, we get 15 ohms. We have less than one ohm. And I can tell you from experience that a good half an ohm of that is in the meter lead resistance. So I checked to see what these capacitors look like. These capacitors are okay. And Tech makes it pretty simple to isolate the board by pulling what they refer to the, the uh, inner board connectors that they refer to as combs. And when I pull one, you'll see why. Um, this is a connector but these are the inner board connectors. So we're gonna pull Y3, which is down here at the bottom. And I am going to put uh, a mini grabber onto our 15 volt test points so we can see when we have the problem. Okay, so you can see we have 8 tenths of an ohm. So what we wanna do now is we wanna pull Cone connector Y. This is X, Y is here. And that's not it. Now, this is why they refer to them as combs. You can see they look basically like a comb um, someone might put in their hair. So the other one we want to pull is comb P. So I have to turn the scope up on its side. Okay, you can still see the meter. P is right here. And when I pull it out, our short clears. So our short is on the sweep board here somewhere. Chances are better than even, it's a shorted tantalum. I'm gonna have to pull up the schematic for this so we can get a look at it. Okay, so now that we know we had a, a short that cleared when we pulled comb P, we need to take a look at the power distribution to see where else that goes. And if we look here, we can see that our 15 volt feeds down into comb L to go to the trigger board, and then comb C to go into the horizontal board. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find comb L and pull it and see if our short clears. Let's see where L is. K 
Okay is here. L is down here. And I pull it and there's no change. So I am going to put that back. And then we need to find C. And C is right here. Okay, now that we pulled C, you should be able to see we have 120 ohms right here. So I'm going to put that back. Okay, now we see we have our short back here. Now I got to turn the scope over and we need to take a look at what we need to find here on C. So we know this is our 15 coming in here at C3. So we want to take a look right here. We want to check these capacitors to see if we have a short. We have C30, C1130, C1131, and C1132. Now those guys are going to be on here somewhere. Here's 1132, there's C1130, and all the way over here is C1131. So those are down on this board. I'm going to take a moment and move everything so you can get a better look. Okay, so we have three capacitors here. We have C1130, C1131, and C1132. Now, C1130, right here. Wow, now if you look at our meter, you'll see we now have 0.5 ohms instead of the 0.8 that we had before. This means we're getting closer to the short. And if I look at, I believe this is C1131. Now you see that's 0.7. That's passing through an inductor, so that's not our problem. This is looking good, but when I look at what I believe is 1132 over here. That looks like our short because you can see right here that is 0.2 ohms. So I'm going to lift that. Let's see if this clears. Okay. Where are we at? Okay, now we have 20 ohms, which may be good. If there's a lot of things that draw from the positive 15, that may be acceptable. So I am going to replace that capacitor, and we're going to fire it up and see what we get. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. I'm going to fire this thing up. Now, I took out a shorted 15 microfarad tantalum capacitor. I don't have any 15 microfarad capacitors. I put in a 22 microfarad at 35 volt electrolytic. So let's see what we get when we turn this on. Well, it's different. I'll give you that. But it still doesn't work. So we need to see where else we might have a problem. Okay, so as often the case, it's a good idea to walk away when something uh, throws you a curve if you have the opportunity to do so. At work, I don't, but here I do. I can take a few minutes or even a few hours, walk away, think about the problem, and then come back. So what I see is we still have a short here on a positive 15 volt rail, and I cleared one short. But I think another cropped up as soon as we energized it. I had 20 some ohms, if you recall, when I cleared the one short. So what I'm going to do now is the same thing we did before. Here's our schematic. Here's our 15 volt supply. I'm going to pull out the comb for Y, the comb for P, and see if we can clear this short. So let me see. I think P is right here. That was where our original short cropped up. I believe we were able to clear it by pulling that, but as you can see, I've got it out and we still have a short. So let's find Y. I believe Y is accessible from here. 
let's see, I believe we are, uh, not sure, X, Y, okay, so Y is this comb here. So I'm going to pull that out and see if our short clears. Okay, that clears our short, so we need to see where Y goes. So we go back to our power distribution schematic. All right, so if we look at this guy, this tells us where our 15 volt supply is distributed to. Now we already checked it went down to L and C. But we need to find Y. So our 15 volt goes up to here. And we also have it here at Y3. When we pull that, it cleared. So we need to take a look over here and see if maybe C697 is shorted. Or we need to look on these boards at 8.5 and 8.6 to see where they go. Okay, so that takes us to A6 here. And where was I looking? Let's see. I think we need to go here. Yeah. Hmm. Knock the uh, filter off the graticule. Let's see. Now, I already found the shorted capacitor. Our 15 volt rail is here, and it's not C697, which is this guy that we were looking for here. I looked around for some of the other tantalums because these tantalums are the ones that tend to fail dead shorted and what I was able to find okay so here's our 15 you can see we have negative six volts down here I'm not sure how well that's going to focus on that But I checked a few more tantalums, and when I got to here, there is a dead short. So I'm going to measure back at our test point. And lift this cant right here. And there you go. And now you see we have 83 ohms with that tantalum lifted. That is a 22 volt. And 22 volt, 22 microfarad, 15 volt. So I'm going to grab one of those and solder in, and we're going to check this thing out. Okay, so I've replaced the tantalum with an electrolytic back here. Uh, these tantalums tend to fail dead short, and it's not unusual to find them like this. So now I'm going to fire it up and see if we get our 15 volts. And we do. We have 15 volts. I have, I have some uh, indicators, and we got a trace. All right. So I had the voltage down a little low on the variac, so I'm going to run it up to 120. There we go, that's 120 volts in the variac. We have 14.85. Our focus is on the back here. And we have nice focus. And tell you what, I'm gonna move this scope so we can see it. I'm gonna turn it off and stand it up. Okay, this is, a red light indicates that we are uncalibrated. Well, this is, Height. Oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't indicate that. That indicates our one times. When we plug a times 10 probe in, the other one light. Been a while since I've seen one of these. Okay, our intensity is good. Uh, let's see, our, where is our horizontal position? 
Yeah, this thing looks really nice. Let's feed in a sine wave and see what it looks like. Okay. And we have nothing. what channel 2 looks like. Yeah, I don't know what that was. But it could be where... Our channel 2 looks promising. Where's our trigger? Okay, I think our mag is on. Power. No, that's about right. Okay, might be something wrong with channel one. Let's see, our focus looks good and our stigmatism. So that's a pretty good display. I don't know why we don't have anything on channel one. Let's go back to that. Okay, channel one might be damaged. Oh. All right, so when we're in 50 ohms, we do get a signal but we don't get anything when we're in one mega ohm. So we might have a problem here. Let's go back to channel two. Okay, so this is a... All right. Okay, so it looks like we just have to look, yeah, just clean the switches. This thing has been sitting, I believe, for years. But anyhow, we have a nice display. Both channels will work, just have to clean some of these things. So I just want to go over the steps we took. We knew we had a problem in the power supply. The, the uh, scope is totally dead. So this has an inverter before it feeds the low voltage power supply. So we had to make sure that we were good in our inverter because our inverter feeds the transformer that creates all the voltages for here. Now our inverter appeared to be okay. We had our voltage across here, but it was kicking in and out. Now usually when, they, when they're in that mode, I've heard people call it tick-tick mode because you can hear it tick slightly as it turns on and the short forces it to turn off and it just cycles over and over that way. So what we had to do was we had to check all the power supplies to see if any of them were shorted to the ground. Now this is power off testing with just an ohmmeter. And fortunately we had test points to test all those. So we just went through and tested until we found a short. And we found a short on our 15 volt. And fortunately, Tektronix makes it pretty easy to isolate because you can pull those interboard connectors or combs out and you can isolate whether it's on the P connector, the Y connector, and so on. And that way we're able to localize it to an area and then once we're in an area to pinpoint where the trouble actually was. Um, Panelum capacitors tend to fail dead shorted. And there were two of them in here that failed dead shorted. One of them, this one here, the leg broke off of, but I'll show you on both of them that they are indeed dead shorted. So we have... Two tantalums. We have this one, which is 22 microfarads at, I believe this was 15 volts. No, 20. This was 22 at 15 which is really close to the line because remember, we're talking about a 15 volt supply. And this was 15 microfarad at 20 volts. 
both are completely dead shorted. So if we look here, I can see the meter, so I guess you can too. So here's one. And you can see this tantalum is dead shorted. And let's see if we can get the other one. It's broken off, but I should be able to just get some contact in there. Yeah, so both these tants are dead shorted. Again, that's their general failure mode. But once we were able to trace them out, we could find out where our scope was giving us problems, and now we have a good solid display. Now it's just a matter of cleaning all these controls because this thing sat for a long time. Anyhow, I'm going to stop this video here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I, um, I always do when I do these things, and I enjoy reading all your comments. And believe me, I learn from you folks as well. So keep them coming. And as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks.